Hello guys and welcome to episode 4 of my Rome 2 Total War campaign, Empire Divided, playing as the Sassanids, and today we're going to be defending, or not, Adumatu. Uh, I've pretty much been thinking about this since the last episode uh, that I recorded, and I kind of decided that putting the very, was it, very light melee infantry up against Hillmen was not the best idea. If we have a look at uh, the melee defense and melee attack of these Hampshire infantry, it is not very good compared to the melee attack and melee defense of the Hillmen. That is just not going to go very well. So basically running away with Rostam's companions seems like the best idea. Not something that I would usually do, but uh, sacrifices that I needed to make all the way back when I played Rome 2 Caesar and Ghoul were definitely necessary and I feel like will be necessary in this campaign. So let's get the hell out of there. We're going to leave Adumatu. It has an absolutely terrible garrison force. So yeah, we're going to stop the build of the Royal Sanctuary. We'll get our cash back for that. We'll let Adumatu fall. And uh, that will be everything. Okay, same goes for Hatra. We have a massive army coming down upon us. There is no point in trying to defend this. What I'm kind of thinking is just sort of consolidate my forces at uh, Sesiphon here. And um, then work with these armies together to crush armies that take either Hatra or Adumatu. All the while we can continue to rampage in their back line with our leader over here, Has Habs Hasmid. Yeah, he's got our pro professional forces. He's got the Immortal Infantry, he's got the Dalamite Infantry, he's got the Eastern Horse Skirmishers and the Eastern Scouts, he's got the Anatolian Slingers as well. So he's got definitely a very good army to go ahead and take um, Aelia Capitolina Capitolina over here and uh, then we may go and get Tyros as well and maybe even head up to Palmyra especially if it's undefended with all of their armies coming into our lands. So yeah we'll have to wait and see but I think consolidating our forces is a good idea. I don't want to get stuck um, like I did with the Caesar and Gaul campaign and we're already what only 13 turns into the game I think. So yeah we're gonna run away with the watch. It might be worth just fast moving all the way down to uh, Cetiphon as well just because I uh, we won't be able to recruit here so like although I have all of these recruitment options if Hatra like gets taken I'm not sure where the province begins and ends but I don't think we'll be in friendly territory anymore so I'm just gonna march towards Sesiphon and we'll just chill there for now and what's Cartier doing over here? I believe he's still improving the tax rate uh, at uh, Parthia. That's absolutely fine. Uh, we do have the Fury of Vera Thragna over here at uh, Acher. But we don't really have the infantry to like scale any walls, so we might just have to siege that down. And uh, yeah, we'll try and do that in the future. But uh, that's everything done for this turn, I believe, unless there's things I want to build, which I don't think there is. We can upgrade this to the Travelling Restless, but we are waiting for the trader, aren't we? So, uh, yeah, we're just going to chill with building all of those. And losing Adi Matthew is not ideal, but uh, we will go ahead and end the turn. It seems inevitable at this point. We'll have Palmyra screwing us over. So we'll actually have a good chance to have a look at what their units are. They have Armoured Swordsmen. They have uh, Mercenary Persian Cataphracts. Gotta hate cataphracts when they're against you at least. Um, and they have some mercenary raven spearmen, mercenary Persian light infantry, and their general, whatever that is. Looks like something scary. They only have 12. I'm pretty sure it's something like scythe chariots, if I am correct. I'm not sure. We'll have to check afterwards, but uh, we are just going to auto resolve this, of course. No point in uh, really trying to stay alive with that army. Or well, poor excuse for an army. It's more a garrison than anything else. But really not... Yes, they are Scythe Terrors. <laughs> oh, Lord. Yeah, we don't want to be playing against those anytime soon. I don't think there's anything in the other army that can really deal with them. Okay. Next battle is going to be Hatra under attack by a smaller army, actually. Hillmen and the uh, Palmyrin... Uh, Palmyrin... 
Skirmishers. There's also the general there, of course. There's not really much point in playing this out. We're not going to win. So we'll just let that go. I think if my army was in there, what would have likely happened is we just lost. Um, yeah, lost it to them anyway, because they've moved the big army right next to it. So I think retreating was the best idea. I will speak the hardest word for a warrior. Peace. We can't lie. We'd like Made peace, but uh, we are not going to let them have that. The Dai are coming back with one of their armies there. And the main trade agreement has been dissolved. Also with Armenia. I'm assuming that's because we've lost one of our provinces, which kind of sucks. Cartier has increased in rank, though. Okay, we're still positive on cash. I don't think it was a big deal really losing those minor settlements. And let's see what we can do with this chap. We wanted to go for civil administration, didn't we? Uh, for the extra tax rate for this action. So that should improve our income a little bit. Um, let's get the Fury of Verethrangra and uh, move on Akia over here. Looks like our guys are nearby. We can't this assault the walls. Yeah, it looks like the Bane of Rome here, Margiana, are close by. So maybe they'll help us out. Hopefully they will. The only thing, other thing to consider really is whether or not we can attack, but I don't think we can due to the Step Spearmen. And all these Step Slingers are going to be more than enough to sort of kill my units. In the open, however, if they sallied forth, these Eastern Scouts would run down there ranged forces very easily indeed. So we're just going to continue the siege there. And how long is that going to take? Does it tell me? Only three turns? Okay, we'll go for it. Um, the Forgotten Warriors, they can surely go and attack Elia Capitalin Capitalina over here. So let's do that. Seems as though the auto resolve is actually pretty heavily in our favour. If I go to the auto resolve here. Yeah, I think if we go for a balanced stance, I'm happy with 88% remaining alive. No point in playing it out if we don't have to. We'll just lose a lot of men to the towers if we do that. I'm going to raise this like I did the last one because I think raising is the best choice because it proves it only gives us conquest negative modifier for one turn. And the provincial provincial instability is only five for well, is only minus five, which goes down by one per turn. So it only takes five turns to go away. Whereas if you loot it for more cash, you only get an extra thousand, but you deal with the provincial instability for a lot longer by the looks of things. So raising it seems like the best bet. And it'll also open up a lot of slots. Uh, on top of that, we don't need the cash because we have thirteen thousand at the moment, which is pretty incredible. So, can we just convert this straight away into a city? Because I believe this here, yeah, that's a city that needs to be converted. But here we can just do it straight into a city. We probably should have done that in Petra, but never mind. Um, we are going to need a well for the sanitation and public order. We are also going to need a shrine for the sanitation and public order. And then what else could we go for? I'm not sure if uh, getting the city centre for even more public order is necessary. Uh, I think, honestly, we could go for an infantry camp or something that can give us some solid units. Like, those ballistas would be quite nice from the Quartermaster. Eastern Ballista and Eastern Scorpions. I feel like those do quite a lot of damage in fights. And being able to recruit them would be pretty useful. What would we replace them with, though? Maybe some Eastern Horse Skirmishers? Get rid of a couple of these and replace them with Ballistas? Who knows? I'll build that there for now. We do get the 50 wealth from manufacturing anyway. So, it will give us a little bit of income if we do that. Building's nearly finished in Petra. Basically, changing this to our own culture should help out as well. But depending on where these armies go, 
I just realized there's two armies there. Uh, we might have to defend Petra. As I will want to hold on to the capitals more than I do the secondary se settlements. But yeah, that is two full armies. Hmm. Palmyra definitely has a lot of forces. And I really want to deal with the Dahi quickly. Because at the moment, uh, they're taking their sweet time to die. Even though we've won some significant battles against them already. Alright, let's move Rostan's companions in here. Um, I guess what we're going to do is just let those replenish and then recruit more forces into the watch. So I think getting more Eastern Scouts is a great idea. And I'm going to go for Eastern Horse Archers just because they have the extra range. I think the Eastern Horse Skirmishers do more damage. But uh, getting range against enemy Horse Skirmishers I think is a is a good idea. And very useful indeed. Let's have a look at some of these event messages. Got motivated populace in uh, Media Magna. That's quite nice. An encouraged populace. Improves our tax rate and growth per turn. Uh, trait gained, cultural influence for the mages. Good. What we're going to need to do actually is bring our mages back over here because I feel like we need to convert this to uh, Eastern more. So let's get Cartier to head back in this direction towards our capital. And he can continue with his culture conversion as he goes. Is that everything done? Not much we can do with the Fury of Verethrangra. We can maybe hire some mercenaries. We've already got the mercenary step cavalry, but uh, it might be worth uh, dropping out some of these weaker units of Sassassian levy spearmen for mercenary Sarmatian light cavalry, because I'm not sure we can merge them. I'm pressing M. Is it control M? Yes, it is. It's control M. Okay, so that's merged those units, and that's going to allow us to hire Two more mercenary Sarmatian like cavalry. I might go for one squad of Sarmatian horse archers. There we go. So that sort of bolsters that force a little bit. I think it's finally time to uh, move on to the next turn. So yeah, it's... Uh, definitely got very difficult very quickly <laughs> with all of those Palmyra armies arriving. Wait, where did they get all those troops from? Don't tell me they can recruit while they're under siege. Oh, I think I forgot about that. Oh, that's such a bummer. Oh, I think that's a thing in Room 2, isn't it? You can recruit while you're under siege. Or at least the AI can. I don't know, because how else would have they got a full army out of that? Pretty sure they were almost half the size previously. That seems... a bit silly, if I'm honest. So I'm just going to retreat from that. And they did not follow me. Alright, so our research is complete. Royal Astronomers. And our next technology is Venerate Shapir, which gives us the extra public order in all provinces. Very nice indeed. Also, the extra cultural conversion is very nice. However, one thing that I was a little bit worried about is my army composition, because currently I'm only able to recruit Sassassian Levy Spearmen. I kind of feel like I should change it so I can recruit better troops. Like levy troops, for example, only takes one turn. So does the uh, pagan training. So I think doing that is a good idea. Maybe not continuing on that path, but definitely getting at least the tier two buildings will unlock some very good or well, better units for us than we have already. Yeah. I think that's a good shout. And then we can upgrade this to an infantry tent, which unlocks the recruitment of Dalimite infantry, which is going to help us out a lot better against these armies incoming from Palmyra. 
Another thing that I was thinking about was agents. We haven't got many other agents other than Cartier at the moment. Can we recruit any? We can actually recruit spies. Let's see, shall we? Minus 5% cost for performing all actions. That's actually quite nice. We tend to use the spies, though, for assassination more than anything. Hmm. I think the uh, minus 5% cost there is actually pretty good for us. What's the limit on those? Oh, we have a limit of three. Oh, wow. So we can get even more of these maguses? And do they even cost us any upkeep? I don't think they do. I don't think our upkeep changed then, did it? We may as well get a veteran for one of our armies, because that will increase, increase the unit ranks over time. And this guy gives us minus three upkeep for all land units in the parent army, extra morale and military training. That is very nice indeed. Some very good bonuses there. Okay, so we'll pick him up as well. We can still recruit more because we have more cash. I think having the spies at the moment is very important, just so that I can see what's going on. Because I need to keep an eye on where these armies are. What does this one do? Extra tax rate for civil administration. That one's only plus 2%. And that one doesn't give us any. I think this guy is the best, isn't he? Minus 2% construction costs for the locals as well. Minus 4% upkeep cost. For military administration. I'm assuming that's being in an army. Yeah, let's get this chap. As well. And uh, I think that's a good amount of agents. We're getting 1,700 a turn. And uh, we'll still have Cartier come over here because he's got uh, all of the buffs that allow us to culture convert a lot quicker. So, yeah, we'll do that. Right, the Forgotten Warriors. I'm a little bit worried about Petra. So, I think I'm just going to head back in this direction for now. And uh, we will sit in Petra. Do I want to upgrade this to the Royal Sanctuary? Probably not for now. Just because I'm not sure I'm going to be holding on to the settlement for much longer. Right, this uh, army, I think, just needs to retreat. Uh, I think we just need to head back to Nisa. Because I don't know where their army came from, but they have a full army again. And that's kind of bullshit, if you ask me. Huh. Oh well. Uh, Rostam's companions may as well go into our capital. And uh, we will allow the watch to just continue to recruit. These guys don't actually cost much to upkeep, so that's handy. We'll go for another Eastern Scout. So I'll get some more Sassassian Levy Spearmen, and we'll get some more Persian Skirmishers. Might even go for even more Skirmishers. Actually, nah. We'll, we'll stick with uh, two units of Sassassian Levy Spearmen. Alright. So next turn, what we can do is... I'll probably put Xerxes here into Rostam's Companions to improve our experience there and morale and so on. And we'll have um, Arsimis just sort of hang around here as well, uh, maybe sort of on the border so that I can see enemies coming. And we'll get uh, Haidanis to sort of head up to uh, Hatra. Alright, cool. Sorry if I'm still butchering a lot of the names of the people and the places, but uh, <laughs> not the names that I'm familiar with. New party formed. House of Gryu. Gryu. Oh God. Well then. Um, not sure we have to keep an eye on that, but uh, we shall continue on to the next turn. I'm actually really scared about pressing next turn these days because who knows when an army's going to pop out of nowhere.
Oh, Odessa was taken by our satrapy in the top left there. That's quite nice to see. Acha has been abandoned by the Dai. And I believe our satrapy is like right next to them, so I'm not sure why they've done that. But either way, we are sorting out the public order here. There is an army, however, coming down for Elia Capitolina. So uh, I think we need to just jump back here. I'm not sure we're in range to attack uh, Palmilla. But that, I think, is the Empress. That's the Empress of uh, Palmilla. Oh, okay. So, looks like we might have an, a battle with her. That's pretty cool. Um, motivated populace in a couple of places. We've got uh, construction reports. Household expands. Plus two morale for all units, or we get the plus one cunning. I think the plus two morale for all units is pretty nice, actually. So we'll replace that. Plus one cunning instead of plus one zeal. We'll send that to the pool. And that's everything done there. Okay. Xerxes can go ahead and jump into that army. What's going on over here? The Legion of Yarebol. Oh shit, there's another army there as well. Okay, so both the armies from the mid have actually come towards our capital. Hmm. What are we going to do about that? Can we even fight that? What's their army com composition? Thankfully I can see it due to my spy. <laughs> we have the Hillmen in there. Which are generally better than anything that I have. Thankfully Sassassi and Levy Spearmen have some sort of melee defense. But uh, the Hillmen still have decent melee attack to break through. I think our only benefit here, really, is that we have way more cavalry. They have two generals on scythe chariots. Which, uh, I don't really know how I'm going to deal with that, if I'm honest. Um, I'm just going to make sure that I'm close enough to Sesiphon to, like, help defend it. And I guess we'll just continue to recruit more troops into the secondary army. I'm actually going to remove one of these Hamsfer infantry and I will replace it with Sassassian Levy Spearman. Yeah, I think I'm going to do that. Okay. So we'll keep an eye with Hydanis. I'll put him on to intelligence in the enemy territory as well, just to get him some experience. I might do the same with Arsmiz here, actually. Or what actions can he do? He can do military disruption, undermine authority, mislead command, that's not ideal. Assassination isn't ideal either, so yeah, we'll just do corruption here. And then we have uh, Cartier ready to do administration in our capital area, which is nice. So the fury of Verethragna needs to go into normal stance. I have no idea where the Dai's army's gone. We have Bactria here and we have Margiana here. Let's upgrade these guys. And uh, may as well upgrade all of my mercs. Because we're going to be holding on to them for a while. And yeah, we'll just keep them in normal stance at Nisa because they attacked it before, so I wouldn't be surprised if they tried to do it again. Let's jump into our diplomacy actually and see if there's anyone else I can trade with that I'm not already. We can actually trade with Egypt. Welcome, worthy friend. I trust you. You're great. That's good, that's good. It's not gonna give us great amount, but still worth doing, I think. Cool. Um, what else can we do? Nothing else in the end turn, I don't believe. Technology is complete in the next turn. That's going to give us access to the infantry tents and, tents and cavalry stables. Let's move on to the next turn.
see where Palmera decides to attack us, if at all. So it looks like the Empress went back to Tyros. Whether or not we should chase her, I'm not entirely sure. If I'm correct, it looks like our satrapy took Akka. The levy troops in complete, and uh, talks with Cartier, part one. Cartier, the priest, is a fascinating source of wisdom. Each conversation I have with him is utterly delightful. I am never sure whether he jests or is serious or puts my knowledge to come some kind of test. Our current situation is a perfect example. We have been discussing horse breeds when he smiles and abruptly changes the subject. Tell me, O oh magnificent lord, tell me. A single word that means freedom. A noun, if it pleases you. I think for a bit and answer. So what means freedom? Destruction, command, honour or duty. It looks like they come with a little bit extra there. Destruction, for freedom is attained only through strife. Command, for freedom is to rule and give orders. Duty, for a man unswerving can never be subjugated. Or honour, for honour is in fact everything. Freedom. I mean, is this actually matter? Like, does does it matter what I choose? <laughs> I'm assuming it gives us some sort of buff or negative modifier, depending on which one we choose. I'm assuming... I kind of want to say honour. Or duty. No, duty, to me, is to do with being subjugated. Destruction, maybe. For freedom is on is attained only through strife. Generally, yes. Let's go for destruction. Okay. Um, so both these armies raiding our lands. Fun times. Uh, let's see if we can maybe kill one of these generals. And we might be able to go in for like an attack. Although I'm not sure my front line is really going to hold. We have the cavalry to run rampant over their archers and skirmishers. Military sabotage. Intercept orders. Reveals an as yet undiscovered army, settlement or agent belonging to the army's faction. Inflicts minor damage upon all units in the target's army. Positive outcome is 51%. And reduces equipment bonuses. Wreck baggage train. Well, the poison provisions might be quite nice. Or the assassination. But the assassination is a very low chance. Let's go for military sabotage. Poison provisions. Successful. Fantastic. That didn't do much damage. <laughs> I thought that would do maybe a bit more, but never mind. We have upgraded this chap. Let's see. We want to get a better chance of poison provisions doing more damage, so mass poisoning seems to be the way to go with furtiveness, which improves our assassination chance with poison. So yeah, we'll go with that, given the spy trait there. Might also be worth giving him the household which is going to give him the plus one cunning with the extra chance of wounding enemy agents in self-defense and 10% to the chance of discovering hidden agents and armies that seems like pretty good for him Asim is here his assassination chances are very low right what I'm going to try and do is uh, we'll bring up the watch into range and then what I'm going to do is go for an attack like so see what the balance bar is like because our own sort of tactical outplay might allow us to win this battle hmm. no I think I'm just going to retreat for now 
I don't think there's any point in playing a battle we don't need to. Like, they can stand there for, long, for as long as they like. And the moment we have an army in their back line doing a lot of damage. So, I think hanging about, maybe upgrading our infantry with the infantry tent, is actually a pretty damn decent idea. What's actually unlocked by these stables? Griv Panva Cataphracts. I wouldn't mind getting my hand on some cataphracts, honestly. Let's go for the cavalry stable upgrade and the infantry tents upgrade at the same time. I completely forgot they're in two different settlements, so that should work out quite well. How can I serve you? As for Katia, he can just stay where he is, no point in him moving. The Forgotten Warriors, do we want to chase down the Queen? We know that both of the armies that were at Adumatu are over here at uh, Sesiphon, so maybe we should head up towards Tyros and uh, challenge the Empress. We might even be able to set up an ambush. Like an ambush would work out very nicely. I'm just looking at the ambush success chance here. We fight for you, my Ready for further orders. I can't actually see <laughs> very much ahead of me, which is sucky and I don't think I left enough to go into ambush stance. It requires 50%. Make haste, men. Where is their army gone as well? I think I'm just going to sort of fall back a little bit because I don't want to walk into an ambush that they've set up. As for technology, I think we continue with the Venerate Chapur now. And the Fury of Vereth Ragna needs to take out these armies since uh, Akir was taken by Margiana. What I'm going to do is jump into my diplomacy and I'm going to set the war coordination target for the Dahe um, so that my satrapies continue to attack the Dahe and, and clean them up for me. It seems that they've done a good job so far. Um, but the Fury of Verathrangda here still needs some replenishment whether or not it's worth going to attack these guys or not is... Uh, I don't know. I'm a bit wary of it. Let's maybe just go over here and we'll go into ambush stance. And if they come towards Nisa, maybe they'll walk past the Fury of Velothragna in, in the process. Right, those armies are just staying where they are since we don't want to fight this battle just yet. If I can, what I'll do is... Uh, poison their provisions again next turn but for now guys unfortunately it has been my time so I am going to have to leave it here this has been an interesting episode to say the least we did lose Hatra and Adimatu but we did take over Aelia Capitolina ourselves and we still have the Forgotten Warriors with Hormids in their back line so yeah, it looks like we uh, might be able to make some more ground over here. Maybe uh, head our army over to Palmyra. We also have our satrapy of Armenia coming down to attack uh, Thapsicus. So all these satrapies really coming in handy. And uh, maybe later on we can actually sort of integrate them or confederate them. Most humble audience for your terms, my poor self. I'm not now sure we can. Speak as you will. You know, it doesn't look like we can actually... Yeah, it doesn't look like we can actually sort of integrate them. But uh, yeah, anyway, that's where I'm going to leave it. So hopefully you guys have enjoyed the episode. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.